Prime Minister the Honourable Frundel Stewart took over the reins of government six months ago following the passing of his predecessor, the Honourable David Thompson. This evening, Prime Minister Stewart has kindly consented to sit with the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation to discuss wide-ranging national issues. Thank you very much, Mr. Prime Minister, for inviting me. Pleasure to have you. Now, I'm sure that over the several weeks and months, you've been hearing many commentators saying things like the driver can drive, you're a ceremonial prime minister, and questioning your leadership style. How, how would you respond to your critics? Well, first of all, let me say that um, I have thought it appropriate to have this interview at this time because, as you quite correctly said, I've just completed six um, months as Prime Minister of Barbados. And I think this moment propitious for this interview because uh, we are in the Easter season. Uh, a season that sums up, I think, the human story very succinctly. That really there can be no Easter if you don't have a good Friday. Um, th there's a tendency to believe that life should be all Easter's. But as I've said on other occasions, Easter would be a philosophical absurdity if there was nothing called Good Friday. And it is perhaps an appropriate time for me to say to Barbadians that you will have many Good Fridays in your life. Uh, you lose a job, you get evicted from your home, you uh, have lost a child to drugs, or your family is broken up. All of these are the Good Fridays through which human beings pass. But the fatal mistake in all of this would be to believe that Good Friday does not ever come to an end. Good Friday, as long as you understand it and work towards it, will always issue into Easter, a time of triumph, a time of, of celebration. And I think making this point especially important, having regard to the fact that Barbados has been going through a very difficult period economically uh, ever since the last quarter of 2007. And um, it's the worst recession the world has seen in well nigh 100 years. And it has caused some dislocation uh, in people's lives. It has put the country under some, some pressure and for a much longer time than one would have wished. But recession has come to an end. This is the Good Friday. This too will come to an end. And I just want to take this opportunity to thank Barbadians for the patience and the strength of character they've shown during this very difficult period. I think we have managed quite well and the first signs of, of emerging from this crisis uh, are beginning to, 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 to manifest. And uh, I think, therefore, that Good Friday is beginning to recede into the background and that Easter is beginning to shine in all of its resplendence. It is against that background, of course, that I want to address the question which you have asked. Well, let me say that the critics are saying what they are able to say. They would be much happier if they could have said whose back pocket I was in, or uh, which deal I was caught do, uh, be in, being involved in. Caught your hand in the cookie jar. Right. So they would be much happier saying that. If after 17 years in electoral politics, if after upwards of a quarter century as a lawyer, and if after three years as a minister of the crown, all my critics can say is that I'm ceremonial, I should really go and buy a lot of ticket. I mean, this is, this is the highest tribute that you can pay to anybody in public life, to be able to say after all this time that he's a ceremonial prime minister or that the driver can't drive. They would have been much happier 
if they could say something else. If they could have said, for example, that torrents of expletives flow from me every day against public servants, uh, and that I, I uh, insult my, 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 my cabinet and, and so on in public, they would have been glad to say that. They can't say that. So they have to resort to these very innocuous uh, accusations. And, and quite frankly, I'm, I'm happy with them. I'm not worried about that. I have my own style, as every other leader of Barbados has had his own style. My style ha has not changed in politics. And if that style brought me to the Prime Minister's office, I don't know of any good reason why you should change it. So I, I, I'm really not uncomfortable about any of that. Um, Barbadians will over time get to see what Frundle Short is about as Prime Minister. I don't covet anybody else's style. I am quite comfortable with the way things are being done, and my cabinet is quite comfortable with the way things are being done. So you don't feel any pressure, because they always compare you with Barrow, with Thompson. You don't feel any pressure. You, you have your own style. What is that style? I do not. Let me, let me answer the question you asked. I don't feel any pressure for this reason, that I've been around politics long enough to know when Barrow's style was being criticized too. Barra is not being beatified because they are sure he is dead. I was around when Thompson style was being criticized by the same people. He is now a candidate for beatification because they are sure he is dead. Even when he was on his deathbed and going through a very difficult period and his family was under pressure, they were going after him. I mean, it was the most embarrassing period in this, in, the, in this country's life. But they're sure he's dead now. So he is now a candidate for beatification. Um, I don't feel any, any, any pressure from those, from those comparisons. When Errol Barrow was leading the Democratic Labour Party, I have the record. The then leader of the Barbados Labour Party, Tom Adams, said that the Democratic Labour Party was a headless organization, and Barrow was leading it. For the better part of Thompson's career as a leader of the Democratic Labour Party, he was held up to ridicule in Barbados by the same people who are trying to beatify him now. So against the background of what I said earlier about Good Friday and Easter, if you live long enough, you will hear me being beatified. Just be patient. <laughs> The things um, I, I'm going to come back to this though. You, we have you have just come out of hugely successful by election. Many of the national issues were fully ventilated then, but still your critics are saying you're silent, you're dumb. <laughs> Your response. Well, um, again. If that's all they can say, I mean, I've come along in Barbados, as I've said recently, and the criticism I've heard of uh, hurled at people uh, of one kind or another is that they talk too much. Uh, it is refreshing to hear that criticism change and, and a man accused of, of talking too little. Um, since becoming Prime Minister, of course, I addressed the nation at independence, and I gave my perspectives on what I was seeing then in the world and in Barbados and for Barbados. I address the nation again at Christmas time. The Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association, I address them in December. These are Barbadians. These are not people from the Solomon Islands or from Antarctica. These are Barbadians to whom I was speaking. In January, I addressed the Barbados uh, Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And I have been talking on various subjects all across Barbados ever since I became Prime Minister of Barbados. The irony of all of this is that the very people who say that I'm not talking, 
their own media report what I say. <laughs> so you have the ludicrous situation where a radio station will be saying you can't hear from the Prime Minister, but when they break for the news, there's a clip from the Prime Minister speaking somewhere and saying something. A newspaper will say you can't hear from the Prime Minister, but then when you take up the newspaper the following day, you can see the, a report of what the Prime Minister said somewhere uh, on some issue. It is just not credible. And um, as I said uh, before, I say again, if at the end of all of this, the only credible accusation that can be hurled at the Prime Minister of Barbados is that he doesn't talk enough, I am happy. That is nothing to be ashamed of. Moving away from issues of leadership and silence, the economy of Barbados, how would you say it is performing? Well, as I said earlier, the, the, the world has been going through its worst recession in, in well nigh 100 years, and obviously Barbados has been affected. When we came into office, of course, we came right into the recession because the recession started around the last quarter of 2007. And the government has had to face this issue head on. Um, we have had to place some emphasis on maintaining stability in Barbados, keeping business confidence up, keeping jobs in place. And um, I think that on any objective evaluation of the government's performance to date, we have been succeeding. The most recent uh, report by the governor of the central bank on the performance of, performance of the economy in the first quarter uh, makes clear that there are signs of light. Tourism is looking um, much better than it has looked for a little while. International business sector, again, looking quite good. And there has been some success in the area of the reduction of unemployment. Those three indices, in my view, are critical indices. And uh, that is therefore good news for Barbados. And I think that we have been on the right track. And I do not see any reason for us to change course at this stage. Obviously, uh, critics and detractors will necessarily say that they would have done it differently, but that has always been the case in politics. We are doing it in this way, and we are quite happy with the results up to now. I know that you're, you said that this is the worst recession since the one we had in the 30s, but can we, I know government's policy is no layoffs, but can that, how can, is that something that's really sustainable? Well, I don't think we have any choice uh, but to ensure that it is sustainable, uh, obviously Barbados is not a country rich in natural resources. Uh, the resources of which we always boast uh, are our human capital. And um, we have a, a highly trained uh, population. In the public service, we have tried to maintain jobs and for the very simple reason that government always has to send the right signals to the private sector. Just imagine what would have happened in Barbados if the government had started a carnival of layoffs. The private sector would have said that if the government can do it, what is there to prevent us from doing it? And that would have created problems that we can do without in Barbados at this time. I really want to take this opportunity though to thank the private sector, the employers of Barbados for holding the government's hand on this issue and taking the government's cue and trying to protect jobs in the private sector as well. But I, I do not think we have any choice but to try to sustain this. It is what we've done over the years. It is what has made Barbados strong. And I don't have any vested interest in seeing Barbados weakened.